Let's start out this lesson by going into Organizer. If you don't already have it open, watch your icon bounce if you're on a Mac. On Windows, go to Start. You know how to do this. In order for us to continue, we don't want to work on blank pieces of paper like we did for the, well, last two lessons. We need to work with images. So go up to the word Import and go down to Files and Folders. Go into your working folder for this chapter and you will find a folder called Selection. Go ahead and get media. Don't change anything else. Now, something cool is going to happen here. These items already have keywords, and they were put on in Photoshop and Bridge. Now, it really doesn't matter the program that did it because it's XMP data, and it's saying you want to use them. Well, it can't hurt. Let's go ahead and do this. Select all. Click OK. We won't need them in this chapter, but who knows? Might need them someday. We've got some images up. Let's go to this one right here. I'm going to right click my mouse and go into Photoshop Elements Editor. Here we go. We have an image of a flower, and maybe I want to eliminate the background, or maybe I want to change the color of the flower, whatever I want to do. That requires selection. Now we've looked at the marquee tools, and we've looked at two of the three lassos. We're going to look at the third one, and that's the magnetic lasso. Now remember, if you don't have your tools up here, click the tool option right down here and they'll be more than glad to pop right up for you. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this area right here. That's about a little too much, so let me unzoom by holding the Alt key down and come down just a little. The magnetic lasso is a magnet, and the magnet part is it magnetizes and grabs onto that edge. You say, Andy, that's a two dimensional surface, it doesn't have an edge. Well, do you see the edge? so does Photoshop in the terms of contrast, a shift in brightness. So if I pick up the magnetic lasso and get right about, say, here. Now just click one time. Now begin dragging. Now what's happening is it's finding that edge based on contrast. And if I get a little bit too much caffeine in my blood and I start having the shakes, it still stays on that edge. Now, a couple of things are happening here, but one of the things is those little blocks coming up are called stops. Every once in a while, as you move ahead, it says, ah, he's got it locked in here. I'm going to lock him in. Let's move forward. Let's say for the sake of argument that you made a mistake. And if you look way down, kind of like where the two leaves come together, I don't really like exactly how that was done. And I try to come back, and it won't let me because of the block. Now this is a very easy thing to do. Press the delete key. And every time you do, it will delete one of the blocks, allow you to get closer and closer to this one. You say, well, it's trying to get in there, but then it keeps jumping up like that. What you do is you can make your own blocks. And you do that simply by coming down and then clicking your mouse and you make your own. If not, the computer adds them in. I can come over here and click and make a block if I want to. I can do anything I want, press delete, of course, to get rid of those and get back on track. The magnetic lasso magnetizes to the edge. Now let's look at our options here. Let me come out of here, press deselect. You have a width option. When I click right here, I'm saying to the computer, look 10 pixels, that's the default, or actually five on either side of where I click to find that edge. Now if you've got a rather blurry image, you might want to increase that number. If you've got a really tight edge and maybe some edges around it, you might want to actually reduce that number. Contrast. How much contrast between this and that, where the edge is, represents an edge? Now, 10% default seems to be pretty much fine for us. But if you've got an image where the edge is very indistinct, you might want to increase that number. What's frequency? Let's come back again and click and begin moving. Those blocks. Let me come over here and get rid of this. If I change frequency to zero and come over again, it takes a long time for it to make a block. In other words, you're increasing the distance between the blocks. If I increase frequency to 100, watch what happens now. I'm getting blocks all over the place. There are extreme cases where you're in a very tight place, where you need a lot of control like this, and you'd increase the frequency. The default is 57. Let me go ahead again and get out of here. I'm pressing the Control D key to deselect. 
Let's take that back to 57. If I can actually get that number. I can never get the number I want. How about you? Feather, won't worry about that. Feathering softens the edge. Let's do this. Let's leave everything alone. Let's come over here and let me use the shortcut, which is command with the negative, and bring that down a little bit. Let's see if that's big enough. Now one more. Let's try to make this selection. I'm going to come over to about here, click one time, all the defaults, and begin running around the image. Now remember, you don't have to be slow. Just stay close to the edge enough that it knows you want that edge. And just moving around it. Now we are making mistakes. That's all right. I want to show you how you fix this if you do have mistakes. This is what I would call a rough selection, obviously. Finally back up here, and we have a pretty good rough selection. You say, well, Andy, I see a spot here, and I see a spot over here that I don't like. I need to fix those. Let's zoom in. Never work small. Go big or go home. Okay. Now, I could probably try that with the tool that we're using, the magnetic lasso, but just to show you, you can mix this thing up. I think I might be able to pull this off by actually using my freeform lasso. So I'm going to change tools. Come over here, freeform. Remember, shift means add, alt means take away, or you can choose the buttons down here. I'm going to hold the alt key down. I'm going to get right about here on the outside and start on the outside. And here we go. Now I'm using a drawing tablet, which can make things a little bit easier, I suppose. And sometimes yes, and sometimes no. And just kind of moving around. This is freeform. I'm going to draw a circle, come back up here, and I've got that piece. Now this one down here, the same idea. I'll hold the Alt key down and just kind of come in here. I'm using Freeform. I can use any tool that I think is going to do the job and use the right tool or the right shortcut key, which would be something like either a Shift key to add or the Alt key to take away. Now if we bring that down a little bit more, let's look around. It is a rough selection, but that's actually not too bad. Let me bring that down even a little bit more. Now that you got the selection, you can do whatever you want. For example, I suppose we could go up to the word Enhance on the pull-down menu and go into something like Adjust Color. Maybe go into U and Saturation. Come over here and begin changing the color of just that flower because of our selection. Now that still isn't a great selection. We'll talk more about refining that edge in a bit. But making a selection with the magnetic lasso is actually pretty good if you've got an edge for it to go by. That's the important thing, if you've got that edge. Now let's go ahead and get out of here. Let's go ahead and close this out. Go to the word File, Close. Don't save it. On to the next.